A long time ago, the world was in the middle of a war between humans and monsters. By the end, not a single person remembered why the fighting had started, and thus they agreed to live in peace. Many years later, there are two doctors who specialize in treating monster girls, Dr. Glenn, a human, and his half-snake half-human assistant Safi. They are both very skilled and dedicated to their work, but Dr. Glenn is a bit sus. He's too obsessed with his patient's health, and he doesn't care about their modesty. He will do anything to cure them, even if it means touching them inappropriately or exposing them in public. Safi is not happy with Dr. Glenn's behavior. She has a crush on him, and she gets jealous when he gets close to other monster girls. One day, they receive a letter from Dr. C. Tholi. She is a half-human, half-octopus monster girl who is also a famous doctor. She asks them to go to the arena and check on her patients while she is away. Glenn is eager to help his master, but Safi is worried. She knows that the arena is full of cute monster girls who might catch Dr. Glenn's eye. And she is right. One of the patients is Tazalia Scythia, a centaur who is the only daughter of Scythia transportation. Glenn examines Tazalia and finds out that she is actually completely healthy and fine. He tells her to go and moves on to his other patients. But at the end of the day, as they are about to leave, Glenn is stopped by two of Tazalia's attendants, Kay and Lorna. They are worried and they tell him that something must be wrong with Tazalia, because she has been losing every match in the arena for the last month. They say that she is very talented and hard-working, so it doesn't make sense for her to lose so much. Glenn however is confident in his diagnosis and says that Tazalia is okay. But to make sure, he decides to watch one of her matches. The girl loses again, this time to a cat girl, and Glenn finally sees what the problem is. That night, as Tazalia is training for the next match, Glenn and the two attendants confront her and capture her. Safi holds down the centaur princess in a very awkward and indecent way. Glenn puts some iron hooves on Tazalia's feet. She had been too proud of her royal blood and had refused to wear iron hooves, which is why she was losing her balance and her matches. Tazalia is mad at them for stepping in. But the next day, she wins a match in the arena after losing 10 times in a row. We're then taken to a flashback during the war. Safi was taken as a hostage by Glenn's family, so that her family wouldn't betray the humans. During that time, they became close friends, until the war ended and she went back to her home. Many years later, they met again at the same medical school and became friends again. Next, Glenn and Safi go shopping on the Marrow Waterways, a city built by the Dragon Lady Scatty. Safi is happy that they are shopping together because she can seduce Glenn. However, the boy just sees this as a quick trip to get some supplies. As they reach their destination, a mermaid lady calls them a cute couple and invites them to her place. Safi becomes overwhelmed and drags Glenn to the mermaid. The mermaid, Lulala is a singer who sings for lovers and money, especially lovers. Glenn senses something fishy and asks for a song, but he only pays her two copper coins instead of three. He offers her a free checkup as the third coin. As he expected, the girl can't finish the song and starts coughing. It turns out that she has a disease. Glenn examines her and sees blisters in her mouth. He then checks her gills with his bare hands instead of using tools because, why not? Glenn discovers that Lulala spent way too much time out of water, which caused her gills to inflame and her voice to suffer. Lulala tells them that she had to work 12 hours a day because her father left her family and she had no money. Suddenly, a young boy falls into the river and interrupts their conversation. Lulala jumps in to save him, but she is completely exhausted when she gets out. As the doctors perform CPR on the boy, Lulala falls into the water again. But this time, the mermaid starts drowning in the water. Glenn sees this and dives in to save Lulala. He performs mouth on mouth to force air into her lungs, which makes her gills work again. Safi uses her long tail to drag them out of the water, therefore saving both of them. A few days later, Lulala turns out to be completely okay. She found a new job at the city hall in Marrow Waterways, where she sings every day and earns enough money for her family. After all the necessary touching that Glenn had performed, Lulala formed a crush on him. Meanwhile in Marrow Waterways, a woman is on a mission to catch some crooks in the city. She runs after them like a madwoman, but she gets caught in a trap. The next day, Glenn and Safi are busy healing a slime girl who is literally too hot to handle. They get a visit from Lady Scatty and her bodyguard Kunai. Scatty is a dragon-human hybrid and Kunai is a human golem made of spare human parts. So she's basically the Wish.com version of Frankenstein. Since Scatty has a voice like a whisper, Kunai does all the talking for her. She tells them that she lost an arm in a fight last night and she wants them to find it and stitch it back on. Scatty drags her away, but Kunai doesn't want Glenn's help. She has a bad history with doctors who messed her up more than they fixed her. 
She hates doctors with a passion, except for Safi, who she thinks is cool. She tells Glenn to buzz off and says she'll find her arm by herself. She goes back to the streets and sees the same crooks who took her arm. She decides to follow them, however, she falls for their trap again. Glenn is determined to help Kanai, so he goes looking for her arm. He meets Tazalia, who found Kanai's leg. He examines the leg and sees that the stitches are amateurish. He wonders if the people who made Kanai were even doctors or just some random dudes with a sewing kit. He goes deeper into the city and meets Lalala, who has Kanai's arm. She gives him the arm and tells him that he can use the limbs to track down Kanai's location. Meanwhile, Kanai crawls to a wall and curses her luck. She's missing an arm and a leg, but that's not the worst part. She can still hear the voices of all the people whose body parts were used to make her, so she's basically a human radio. Glenn finds her and offers to help her, but she tells him to go away. He ignores her, puts on his glasses and goes full doctor mode. He fixes her arm and leg and connects all the blood vessels properly. He tells her that this might stop the voices in her head, since she'll feel more connected to her body parts. He also makes her feel some other things, if you know what I mean. She thanks him, even though she still hates doctors. The girl thinks Glenn is different from the rest. Back at the clinic, Safi gets a harpy egg from one of her mates. She tries to prank Glenn and tells him that she's pregnant, but he's not fooled since he knows that snakes lay eggs. Safi shows him the abandoned harpy egg, which her friend found on the street. Glenn checks the egg and sees that it's not fertilized, so it's just a big omelet waiting to happen. Outside, some bandits show up and attack the clinic from the front door. The bandits are all human, so Safi beats them up just as easily as she beats Glenn. What do you mean by that? More bandits show up, so the doctors run outside and meet Kunai. She tells them that the bandits are slavers who kidnap harpies and force them to lay eggs, which they sell to the highest bidders on the black market. The doctors ask for help from the city council, but they're all busy with their own mission to stop the slavers. So the two are forced to join Kanai on the mission. Scatty and Lulala join them as well. Out of nowhere, they get attacked by archers, but Tessalia saves them with her horse powers. Kanai and Tessalia fight the bandits outside, while the doctors go inside with Scatty. They find the harpies that were captured by the bandits. They're all okay, except for one harpy who has a stuck egg and is in severe pain. Glenn gets to work and tries to help the harpy deliver the egg safely. Safi fights the bandits and remembers her past. Her own family wanted her to spy on Glenn's family and also kill the family if the deal with the humans went bad. The egg comes out just fine, but Safi gets stabbed by a poison knife. She falls asleep in the middle of the fight. She wakes up soon though because the slavers used weak poison. Glenn tells her that the slavers were caught and the harpy laid her egg safely. Knowing that everything worked out, Safi decides to tell Glenn the truth about her past, but he says he already knew everything. His family did some digging on her when she came to their place. They knew she was there to kill them, but Glenn still wanted to be her friend. Safi is so happy that she uses her tail to tie his arms and legs together, which puts him in a suspicious position. But before she can do anything sus, she falls asleep again. The following day, the two doctors go to the Harpy village to help the locals there. Tessalia pulls their carriage through the mountains when suddenly a rock slide happens. Kay and Lorna save Tessalia from being harmed but Kay gets hurt and can't walk anymore. Some male harpies show up and fly Kay to their village like some real chats. The rest of the group follows them. Glenn finally examines Kay's wound at the village and discovers it's just a mild sprain that needs some rest to heal. But Glenn has no time to relax as he has to help many villagers with various problems at the makeshift clinic. After a long day of work, Glenn steps outside for a breath of fresh air and runs into Lorna, who looks lost. She explains that she came with Tazalia, but her mistress is busy with the harpies, trying to hire them to become the FedEx of the sky. Kay's injury has made Lorna very anxious and she almost messed up Tazalia's deal. Tazalia notices Lorna's anxiety and asks Glenn to check on her. Glenn is puzzled as Lorna has no physical symptoms, but rather a mental issue. Safi suggests that Lorna might have a submissive personality and needs to be restrained to feel calm and secure. Glenn then tries a forbidden and ancient move. He binds and blindfolds Lorna. I think Glenn might have researched the wrong site. To his surprise, Lorna feels much better as she can concentrate on her work. Glenn wonders if Lorna just likes being tied up. <laughs> boy. As a reward, Kay and Lorna offer to please Glenn together. They tell him that their mistress wants to marry him and that they would also belong to him if she did so. They ignore all limits and try to persuade Glenn to finish the deed with them. But Glenn overcomes his demons and firmly rejects them. I see that Glenn still hasn't gotten over Maggie. Kay and Lorna still hope that Glenn will become their master someday. 
the group go to see Illy, the harpy who had been Glenn's patient when they were captured by the bandits. Illy had avoided Glenn's treatment in his makeshift clinic, so he decided to visit her at her home. Illy has lost her ability to fly after the bandit incident, which has shattered her self-esteem. Glenn examines her again and uses his sixth sense to take her temperature and pulse with his bare hands. I wonder what those hands can do. He discovers that Illy isn't sick at all. She was just losing her feathers so that she could grow new ones. Illy is furious with Glenn's diagnosis. She refuses to believe that her flightlessness was caused by some missing feathers. She runs out of the house in a rage. Tessalia follows her and finds out that Illy wanted to be a gladiator like her and fight in the arena. Illy challenges Tessalia to a duel but she is no match for the seasoned fighter. Tessalia grabbed one of Illy's feathers during the fight, which she gives to Glenn. Glenn realizes what the problem is and collects all of Illy's fallen feathers around the town and rushes to find her. Glenn tells Illy that she is molting, but not in a normal way. Illy has phoenix blood in her veins, so she is replacing her old feathers with new ones that have phoenix properties. A few days later, Illy proves Glenn right by flying with her new rainbow wings. Glenn touches one of her feathers and feels its heat. He wonders how much of a phoenix Illy really is. Glenn and Safi also give the harpies some tips on how to care for their wings and claws. When they are about to leave, some harpies come in soaked and covered in a white, creamy, and tasty liquid. It turns out to be spider silk, and it is everywhere in the forest. While exploring, they meet Arania, a spider woman who is a famous dressmaker and Safi's best friend. Arania says she wants to catch Illy and see her rainbow wings, but when she hears that there are many harpies in the village, she is overjoyed and follows Glenn and Safi there. In the village, Arania meets Illy and begs her to let her touch her feathers. She says that she just wants to stroke her feathers. Just one little stroke or perhaps a small squeeze, nothing more. Next day, the girls go to the hot springs because it's good for Safi's health. But at the clinic, Arania sees that Glenn is alone. She seizes the chance and asks him to go for a walk with her. She leads him deep into the forest and traps him in one of her webs. Verania wants to make Glenn her lover so that she can be closer to Safi. Arania starts flirting with Glenn, but Tessalia comes out of nowhere and frees him from the web. Arania says that Tessalia and her are the same because they both want Glenn. Tessalia denies that and says that she loves Glenn sincerely and that unlike her, she isn't a bitch. They are about to fight, but Safi arrives. She scolds her friends and takes Glenn away. Back at the clinic, Safi and Glenn have a drink together. Safi confesses her love to Glenn. She says that he doesn't have to love her back, because she already knows that he can't keep his wood in his pants. But then they hear loud noises outside. They go outside with the rest of the village and see the giant goddess Gigas coming their way. They are clueless about why the goddess is angry and are ready to die by her wrath but Tessalia won't let that happen to her and her friends and leads them to escape the village. Illy, who is the fastest flyer, goes to Glen's town to talk to Lady Scatty. Glen and the others pack their things and plan to leave their town before the goddess gets closer, but they notice that Tessalia is missing. The brave centaur goes off to fight the huge goddess by herself. Tessalia thinks that if she kills a goddess, Glen will have to marry her. Safi and Glen catch up with her and stop her from doing anything stupid, but then the giant reaches them. She sneezes so hard that the whole forest shakes in the wind. She says that her name is Dione and she came to the village because she heard there was a doctor who could cure her. Glenn examines the goddess and discovers that she has a common cold. He gives her some medicine and asks Arania to make some warm clothes for her so that she doesn't have to be so revealing in the cold. Glenn finishes his examination of the goddess and decides to go back home. He reopens his clinic and meets Tessalia for dinner. Unsurprisingly, Tessalia thinks it's a date and tells him how she wanted to die for him. But then Safi shows up and joins them. Can anyone in the comments please tell me what this guy's secret is? The next day, they all go to the Marrow Waterways for the ceremony. Glenn, however, sees something wrong with Scatty's tail. Scatty is giving her speech, but she suddenly faints in front of everyone. Glenn gives her first aid, after which she is rushed to the hospital. The next morning, Safentite and Glenn head to Lindworm's central hospital to check Lady Scatty's health. Glenn had provided her with first aid, but he is not given access to her medical record as Dr. Kathalie is her main physician. They knock on Dr. Kathalie's room, and she joyfully wraps her tentacles around Glenn. Safentite becomes angry, calling Kathalie an unprofessional mentor, and Kathalie tells her to leave, gently placing Glenn back on the ground. Safentite comments on Kathalie's obsession with younger men despite her old age, and Kathalie responds that Safentite is still as jealous as ever. Glenn asks Kathalie about Scatty's true disease, but Kathalie can't disclose all the details as Scatty's physician. 
However, she does mention that Scatty suffers from an extremely rare disease. She explains that it's a miracle Scatty has never fainted in public before, considering the illness has spread throughout her body. The condition causes extreme spikes in her blood pressure, which can lead to heart failure. Treating dragons is challenging because, despite being sick, they are still stronger and more resilient than other monsters. She hasn't even identified the root cause of Scatty's illness yet. Kathalie advises Saffentite and Glenn to return to their clinic. While Glenn stitches Kunai's hand, he asks about Lady Scatty's refusal to be treated. Kunai confirms that it's true, mentioning that Scatty will return to her duties tomorrow, as Dr. Kathalie respects her wish not to receive treatment. However, Kanai finds this unacceptable and believes Scatty needs treatment even if it means going against her will. Kanai asks Glenn if he would take a look at Scatty. Glenn agrees but says he would need to examine Lady Scatty thoroughly. Kanai suggests examining Scatty in her bedroom and hearing the word bedroom. Saffentite drops the bowl she was holding, asking if Glenn will have to do some freaky stuff with a dragon. But Glenn reassures her not to worry, explaining that he has examined patients in their homes before. At night, Kunai guides Glenn and Saffentite to Scatty's room, but she informs them that only Glenn will be allowed to enter the bedroom. Kunai has yet to inform Scatty about the examination, but she believes Scatty will accept it. Glenn enters the room, where he finds Scatty looking out of the window. She asks him why he is here and he explains that he's here to examine her. Scatty allows him to proceed, but she doubts he can cure her. She opens her robe, revealing a blue-colored heart beating from her chest. Scatty explains that it's a cancerous tumor that is attached to most of her veins, resulting in her having two hearts. She believes it's her fate as dragons were not meant for Earth. Their ancestors suffered in the war, losing limbs and becoming half-humans like her. The past bloodshed has led to the current generation paying the price for their ancestors' sins, and that's why she refuses treatment. Despite Scatty's beliefs, Glenn is determined to find a medical solution. He begins the examination by touching her scales, realizing they are hard and may prevent a simple needle from accessing her veins. He moves on to her tail, which is of a different color, and Scatty explains that she stores nutrients in it. As Glenn examines her wings, Scatty becomes very emotional, causing her to cry. Hearing that, Kunai rushes into the room to see Scatty in a questionable state on the floor. This angers Saffentite, but Scatty calms them down and announces that she's going to bed. The next morning, Saffentite and Glenn visit Dr. Kathuli, seeking her assistance with Lady Scatty's surgery. They propose a plan to disconnect veins from Scatty's tumor heart to her real heart, a complex procedure that requires many skilled hands, and Kathuli's tentacles make her the best fit for the task. However, Kathalie refuses, calling Glenn naive for thinking the surgery would be that simple. But Glenn, determined to convince Scatty, explains that Kathalie wants to save Scatty more than anyone else. This recognition fills Kathalie with pride for her students, and she wraps them both in her tentacles. Even if Scatty agrees to the surgery, they will need another skilled doctor to match their speed. Glenn suggests Arania, who may lack medical knowledge but is known for her sewing skills and needlework. They visit Arania's clothing factory but she initially refuses due to concerns about her brand's reputation if the surgery fails. However, Saffentite convinces her by telling she will get to wear a nurse uniform. At Scatty's room, Kunai tries to convince her to undergo surgery, but Scatty remains firm in her decision, stating that she has accepted her fate. Meanwhile, Glenn visits the medical instruments workshop and meets Meme, a one-eyed monster. He asks her to take him to the boss, and she agrees but faces difficulties with depth perception as she's a cyclops. Along the way, she accidentally tears her clothes and gets shy. Eventually, they reach the boss, and Glenn explains that he needs equipment for a significant surgery by the end of the month. The boss agrees to the task but warns that it will require a considerable amount of time and money. Moreover, he cannot guarantee that they can create needles that can pierce a dragon's scales. Glenn, however, expresses his trust in them. Meme is assigned to make the needles, but she refuses due to the possible consequences if the surgery fails. Eventually, she agrees, seeing that Glenn truly believes in her. Back at the clinic, Arania stitches up Kunai, but she asks Saffentite for some booze, feeling tired from work. However, Saffentite refuses to give her any booze until the surgery is done. Kunai explains that she tried to convince Scatty to undergo the surgery, but Scatty believes it's time for her to kick the bucket. Scatty hated the war between dragons and humans and felt her purpose was to build a city where monsters and humans could live together. With Lindworm's growth, she thinks her mission has been fulfilled. 
Glenn offers to accompany Kanai next time they talk to Scatty, but Arania suggests a different approach. Instead of repeating the same words, they need to find a new way to convince her. Later, Dr. Kathuli and Glenn visit the workshop to see the prototype for the surgical instruments, and Kathuli approves of them. However, the needles are unfinished, but the boss wants Meme to work on them without interference. Glenn thinks about his first major surgery and admires Kathuli for being an excellent teacher despite being very harsh on her students. Meme works day and night tirelessly at the shop, determined to create the perfect tool for Scatty's surgery. One day, Illy urgently notifies Glenn that Meme has collapsed at the workshop. Glenn rushes to the workshop and suspects Meme might have a heatstroke. He advises moving her to a cooler place, but Meme, in her weakened state, insists on making the needles. She reveals that the workshop used to make weapons for wars, causing bloodshed. However, when Lady Scatty took over, she transformed the workshop to produce medical instruments that save lives instead. Meme was inspired by Scatty's actions and had been waiting for the day she could do something important for her. She passes out, and when she wakes up, she finds herself in Glenn's clinic. Arania provides her with new clothes, and Glenn examines her, only to find she isn't sick but is dizzy because of motion sickness. Arania is puzzled, as cyclopes typically get motion sickness while moving, but Meme was in the workshop. Meme explains that she was so focused on finding a new way to make needles that she got dizzy from the intense concentration. She invites them to see the needles she has created. Meme shows them the spinning wheel that inspired her needle-making process, which caused her motion sickness. She explains that she tried using iron to create the needles, but mass production turned out to be challenging. However, she discovered they could make sturdy steel wires using the spinning wheel, and cutting these wires into pieces allowed for efficient mass production of the needles. While the steel needles will require replacement after every 10 stitches due to their hardness, they are perfect for surgery. Everyone is amazed by Meme's incredible work, and even her boss is moved to tears. Glenn expresses his gratitude to Meme for her dedication and praises her for the fantastic job she has done. The next morning, as Glenn prepares to leave his clinic, he takes off the dragon scale he attached to his bag and gives them to Sephantite, asking her to put them in his room as he cannot risk offending Scatty with them. He leaves the clinic, ready to convince Scatty to undergo the surgery. Glenn meets Scatty after the council meeting and tries to convince her to undergo the surgery. He returns to the clinic and praises Arania for her improved stitching skills, which makes Safentite jealous. Safentite reminds him that he still has to go to Dr. Kathuli and the workshop, prompting Glenn to rush out as he is already late. Arania tells Safentite that trying to keep Glenn away from other women won't make him notice her. However, Safentite believes that Glenn will always return to her if she waits. Later that night, Safentite, Arania, and Tazalia go out for dinner. Arania asks why Tazalia was invited, and Safentite explains it's a girl's night. Tazalia asks if the ingredients she provided were helpful, and Safentite reveals that Tazalia obtained herbs and ingredients from humans in the East to help Lady Scatty's surgery. Since no surgery has been performed on dragons, they are still determining if the anesthetic will work on Scatty. They are at the bar because their first anesthetic is alcohol from the east. As the night progresses, Arania gets drunk and playfully ties a red thread to the pinkies of Tazalia and Sephantite, declaring them best friends for life. After returning from the bar, Sephantite catches Arania attempting to steal the dragon scales she had given to Glenn. She confronts Arania, expressing her disappointment and stating that she can tolerate harmless pranks but not stealing. Arania panics, tosses the scales away, and tries to escape through the window. However, Tazalia is outside and blocks one exit, while Safentite stands at the other, preventing Arania from leaving. Unable to escape, Arania surrenders. Back inside, Safentite talks to Arania, understanding that they have been asking a lot from her, which has caused stress and triggered her old habit of stealing. Arania admits that the closer she gets to someone, the more possessive she becomes of their belongings. Safentite points out that it's not just about stealing the scales, Arania also tested their friendship by trying to take Glenn away from her. Safentite reassures Arania that she wants to be with her and believes in their friendship, and Tazalia adds that they should trust the bonds they share. This makes Arania emotional. Arania confesses that she was stealing the scales to test Glenn. She's confused by his kindness and how he continues to teach her despite the sus things she's done to him. Arania admits that she can't relax around him and wants to spray her white liquid on him. <laughs> Safentite playfully quizzes Arania about her feelings for Glenn, and Arania unknowingly reveals that she thinks about him before sleeping and feels warm, and her chest tightens around him. They all laugh together, realizing that Arania has developed feelings for Glenn. 
Meanwhile, Glenn visits Scatty, who asks him to lift her so she can view the city. In his arms, she explains her reluctance to undergo the surgery. Scatty reveals that if she had returned to heaven after forming Lindworm, she would have found her full dragon body. However, she chose to live among humans and monsters, creating the city and naming it Lindworm, which means may dragons protect you. Scatty feels her life has been fulfilling and is ready to accept her fate. Glenn reminds her that everyone depends on her and encourages her to continue watching over the city for a little longer. He suggests that she can enjoy the pleasures of life. Scatty agrees to get the surgery and asks him to let her down. A few days later, the day of the surgery arrives, and Dr. Kathuli explains that dragons who breathe fire have minerals in their bodies to protect them from the heat, which is why Lady Scatty's blood is blue. As the surgery begins, Dr. Glenn starts his work, but suddenly Scatty's blood pressure spikes and her body becomes extremely hot, unintentionally emitting fire to protect her. Kathuli quickly instructs Arania and Safentite to step back while she joins Dr. Glenn to operate on Scatty. During the intense surgery, Kathuli uses her tentacles to burn and hold open Scatty's organs while Dr. Glenn carefully performs the delicate procedure. The whole city anxiously awaits the results. Finally, Dr. Glenn announces that the surgery was a success, and the entire city rejoices in relief and joy. Lady Scatty delivers a speech to the town, apologizing for being sick and promising to perform all her duties efficiently. However, Dr. Glenn cannot attend the ceremony as Safentite feels unwell, so Scatty decides to go to him instead. She realizes that Dr. Glenn has helped her escape her shell and wants to live her life to the fullest. At the clinic, Glenn treats Safentite, who is reluctant to open her mouth for him. What do you mean by that? Despite her embarrassment, Glenn insists and discovers white blisters on her tongue. I wonder what those are from. Feeling giddy with the examination, Safentite hides under the blankets, and Glenn excuses himself to leave the room and tells Safentite to rest. Outside, walking to his patient's house, Glenn finds Scatty's broken carriage. Scatty hugs him upon seeing him and expresses happiness that she doesn't have to visit the clinic to find him now. She cheerfully invites Glenn to play with her and her toys, but he declines, as he has a patient to attend to. Scatty flirts with Glenn, but he turns her down, and seeing all this makes Kunai jealous. While waiting for the carriage to be fixed, Mim arrives on site and fixes it. She says that her father used to make carriages, so she knows about fixing them. Scatty thanks Mim for fixing the carriage and making the needles that saved her life during the surgery. In gratitude, Scatty gives Glenn and Mim wine barrels as tokens of thanks. Glenn, needing to attend to the patient, leaves the barrels in Mim's care. At the clinic, Arania helps Safentite change clothes, even though Safentite is already feeling better. They prepare dinner together and compete on who would be a better cook for Glenn. On the other side of town, the giant goddess Dione assists the villagers by removing a boulder obstructing the water flow. Grateful for her help, the villagers offer her fruits, but she surprises them by giving them a large pile of food she brought as a gift from the mountains. Meanwhile, Mim sits guard over the barrels of wine, feeling embarrassed about the situation as she is too young to drink. When Glenn returns, she complains to him for leaving her there, but Tazalia shows up, saying Glenn called her over. Tazalia takes Glenn and his barrel to the clinic, while Lorna takes Mim and her barrel to the workshop. Tazalia and Kay discuss the idea of Glenn and Tazalia getting engaged. But Glenn rejects this idea, stating that he is already engaged with his right hand. Are you sure about that? At the clinic, Safentite becomes worried as Glenn hasn't returned on time. Arania adds to her anxieties by suggesting he might be having a good time with Lulala or Kathuli. Safentite defends Glenn, telling Arania not to think lowly of him. Just then, Illy knocks on the window and delivers food for Glenn, sent by the giant goddess. Illy decides to sit and wait for Glenn to come back. When Glenn finally arrives, all the ladies in the clinic swarm around him. He opens the door, revealing numerous gifts and food left outside by grateful people he encountered on his way back. More people arrive with food to share with Glenn, and they become a larger group. Kunai and others help prepare a feast using the food and drinks, and everyone enjoys the meal together. The girls become a bit jealous as Glenn thanks Scatty for the evening. Scatty, who is usually reserved, thanks Glenn, saying it's the first time she's interacted with so many humans and stepped out of her shell. However, Safentite suddenly wraps Scatty up with her tail and pulls her towards herself, scolding Glenn for being late when she was sick and bringing everyone along when he finally returned, wanting some private time with him. Still, Tazalia intervenes to separate them, and the girls playfully fight over Glenn's attention. Watch this next video, and I'll see you next time.